Hi everyone! Hi! So, today's video will be all about sodium glucose co-transporter to inhibitors. So, what's that? Let's have a look. So, some examples of them you may have heard. Dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, canagliflozin. So, they are basically the gliflozins. The mechanism of action of the gliflozins is not related to insulin action. Unlike the other anti-diabetic drugs that increase the insulin or increase the insulin sensitivity, which means basically they increase the uptake of glucose promoted by insulin by the tissues, especially like the muscles to use the glucose or the liver to store the glucose. Basically, it's a different mechanism of action. In our kidneys, more specifically, in the proximal tubules, uh, the glucose is normally um, reabsorbed into the bloodstream. There are these transporters, so-called uh, sodium glucose co-transporters, that make our glucose and sodium go back to the bloodstream in normal conditions. But these drugs, they will block this action, so they will not allow the glucose to go back and it's just eliminated through our kidneys in the urine and it just goes. And because more glucose goes through our urine and is eliminated, there are some possible side effects. So, the most common side effects are basically, as you can imagine, urinary infections, so UTIs, and also our other genital infections such as trash. Also, because we are eliminating glucose, so more water follows, so there is a diuresis effect. So in that case, dehydration can happen as well. And because we lose all of those, weight loss is also common with these gliflozins. So, these are a type of drug that is indicated in type 2 diabetes and it can be used either in monotherapy or it can be used in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs and also with insulin. So this is a good drug when there is a reduction in the function of the beta cells in the pancreas and also this drug can be useful in patients where weight loss can be beneficial and more specifically the empagliflozin it has been shown to lower the cardiovascular events in patients with high cardiovascular risk so that's a plus to it so i hope this quick video was useful for you if you liked it, just give your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because more videos are on its way. See you soon! Bye!